Hey, my name is Matis, I'm the co-founder and CEO of Cream Finance, and this is what I do. We just move on to some other parts. Um, about business lessons that have been essential for me and for our company. Uh, and maybe they can be you know, useful for you if you're thinking about your business. By the way, like, is anybody of you actually interested in becoming an entrepreneur or like having your own business? Perfect, you're fucking lying. But anyway, let's move on. Um, let me go into these um, business lessons. So first and foremost, create your own formula. What it means is, especially in business, um, you can never say that if you do this or if you do that, you will for sure be successful. That's the formula for success. It does not exist. So it's statistically and scientifically proven that three founders from the same university form the best possible team or you know, increase chances of a success of a startup much more than in any other scenario. Yeah? Three is a very good number because you two, it misses a balance and three is perfect, four is already too much. Yeah? And I don't know if I made that statistic up or it's real, I don't know that, but uh, from my experience, that's definitely the case. What I've seen with our company and with, with, with uh, startups that I've invested in or, or, or worked uh, with. So Richard Branson has this quote which says, screw it, let's do it. It's very cool, funky. I have a more uh, ruthless quote which says, just fucking do it and as soon as possible. So it's kind of common sense, right? In business, it's one of these areas where you have to do uh, you know, uh, to learn uh, how to be good at it. And so the earlier you will start your business, the sooner you will have success. It is that simple. Yeah? Uh, it's not about learning, about doing business. It's really like jumping in and doing some shit, random shit in the beginning, and then it leads you somewhere. And that's the only explanation why if you look at somebody that started a business at the age of 17, which is extremely rare, to somebody that started at 30, that person at 17 will be far more successful. Yeah? Far more successful. Trains breed resourcefulness. So, so this is basically, in essence, what it means. If, if you commit to an objective, to an outcome, to a re desired result in your mind, your mind becomes obviously very you know, generative of ideas and resources, resourcefulness, uh, to find a way to reach that objective. I suppose you already kind of see that. That should be common sense for you because you have reasonable level of success of your age because you got into this good university. Well done for you. Um, and the point is, again, it, 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 this is like having the courage to commit to an outcome, let's say to kind of like start your own company without seeing where the, resu where the resources will come from, how you're gonna get help, where you're gonna get the money, etc. That commitment in your mind is the most difficult thing for people to start a business. That's the glass wall through which most people don't even try to stick through. Uh, but it's like seemingly this like, you know, impossible barrier. Uh, and, and it's that simple and it's, it's all in your mind. All right, finding the right idea. Who has a problem with this? Like finding the right idea for a business? All right, a few. So this is, I would say this is kind of like, sh should be one of the most common things that people struggle with, especially like at the younger age. For me, it has never been a, a problem because I have the, 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 quite the opposite problem. I generate too many ideas and I try to pursue too many of them. So I have to kind of restrict myself for, for generating too many ideas. But there's a few things that I can suggest. Number one is obviously do something that you're naturally interested in, but not like your hobby, what you're fucking passionate about, you know, like, like snowboarding or something, but like what you, what you like professionally. Yeah? If you're a marketing inclined person, yeah, um, then, you know, and you like visuals, communication, then don't do data crunching stuff. For some reason, people still try to kind of look at ideas in areas that are not naturally their kind of keen interest. Because with this idea, with the service or product, you're gonna live with, you know, for the next 10 years, for like 90% of your, you know, time. So make sure it is something that you naturally like spending time uh, at. Um, what else? So. You know, you must have heard of the, 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 the fact or the, the, the positioning that idea means nothing or costs nothing, it's all about execution, right? So, right? Yeah, 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 okay, cool. Um, so, uh, a way to become better at execution, even before having had the experience or before doing something, is to learn about the business models. Not to learn about ideas or look for cool concepts and ideas, but business models. So, for example, 
Nowadays, it's super common for business students to come up with platform ideas. You know, let's share, let's create a platform where freelancers can share their like services, where fucking nannies can, you know, sell their knitting socks and things like that, or like where, I don't know, like buyers and sellers can meet, you know, platforms, right? Like if you spend time learning about what makes a marketplace, a platform as a business model successful, you will do yourself a huge favor far more than thinking about what kind of cool platform idea uh, it will be. Yeah, Just learning about what makes a marketplace as a business model successful. That will be extremely powerful later on than executing. Uh, what else? Then, I mean, common things like um, look at something that is trendy or becoming trendy that's going to be easier to persuade people to join you as opposed to talking about some traditional starting a restaurant type thing um, that's kind of you know obvious what i used to do is i um, looked at uh, portfolio companies of vcs of venture capital funds a lot uh, to kind of you know look for ideas like you know because obviously vcs invest in something that's new fresh they take risks Sometimes they invest in business models that are proven, right? If you don't want to, you know, have the innovation risk. So that's what I did a lot, right? What are the benefits that you associate with having your own business? Just like shout out some points. Lambos, yeah, being rich, having money, right? Yeah, cool. Your own boss, yes. What does it mean to be your own boss? Like, what does it imply? Right. Somebody else. Okay, cool. All right, another point, like third point. Yes, all right. So most of these, so money, making more money, having more f freedom to express yourself, freedom yeah, of time, uh, you won't get any of these when you start your own business for the first many years. It takes like insane amounts of hard work and you have to then also be lucky to get to a point in entrepreneurship and business ownership to have the benefits, to have fucking Lambo, like, you know, decent few million in the bank, you know, like deciding for yourself totally how and what you want to do and working on fucking laptop from like, you know, holiday like location somewhere and so on and so forth. That doesn't happen in the first like many, many years. In the many first years, you're just fucking living in the dirt, so to speak, um, and eating shit. That's, that's the reality, you know, using very rude words. Um, and so you have to be uh, r kind of understanding that, that is the, that's the reality. Yeah? And, and the sad thing is that most entrepreneurs that, you know, get basically stuck in the small to medium business phase, they just get the shit part. That's the reality. They just get the shit part, the kind of cool founders that can get invited to speak in places like this and our own Forbes covers, you know, those are the like the few and also lucky ones. Yeah, most owners of business, they get just the shitty part, like a small business that's totally dependent on them. You know, the, the, they, they, they can't leave the business, uh, otherwise it's going to fall down. It's not independent and it doesn't generate like massive cash. That's the reality. Yeah? Those are the odds that uh, we're facing it, you know, if we're starting a business.